Now let us look at the DNA structure in more detail. We have already seen similar images, DNA is a double helix, it is sort of like the backbone is made up of phosphate and the pentose sugar, I will use a highlighter to point out different structures that I am talking about. So this backbone is made up of pentose sugar and phosphate, this is the backbone of DNA. Please notice that the sugar molecule has two ends, in this case because of the sugar molecule the backbone two ends of the DNA are different. At one end we have carbon atom number 3 with a hydroxyl group right here and at the other end we have carbon atom number 5 with a phosphate group attached to it. So if we draw a line in 5 direction fi from 5, e 5 end to 3 end direction we can make this line and if we put an arrow here this is what we get. By the way the 5 end is called 5 prime end because it is the position of the carbon atom and the 3 end of the pentose which I mentioned here right here is the 3 prime end. We have said the DNA is anti parallel if we do repeat the same exercise with the complementary DNA strand you will see that direction of this DNA from 5 prime to 3 prime end is runs in opposite direction. So this is basically what we mean by anti parallel. So also the we have already mentioned this that you can see here also G and C and A and T pairs they are taking the same amount of space between these two DNA strands keeping the DNA width a constant. So here we, we can see this we have already talked about anti parallel DNA being anti parallel here this it is more clear. Now let us move forward and see how DNA structure allows it to fulfill the basic requirement. The one of the requirements major requirements the responsibility of DNA is to store enormous amount of information. You can realize the, uh, an egg uh, is a very small single cell and it contains DNA and that DNA has information that can result in formation of a whole individual, a whole being whether it is an animal or a human being. So DNA has ability, the capacity to store information in the form of base sequences. So different, co uh, dif different combinations of these bases allows DNA to store enormous amount of information. Susceptibility to change, life would not have evolved it from a simple organism to a more complex organism unless and until the genetic molecule had the ability to change or mutate. So looking at DNA structure it also becomes obvious that if there is a change in the nucleotide it will alter the information contained in the DNA, in the DNA and that happens in nature due to various reasons and that allows the diversity that we see in life. Precise replication, we, we have already seen the DNA structure in the previous slide, a simple model of DNA replication would be two strands coming apart, the information becoming exposed, the sequence of nucleotides becoming exposed and complementary nucleotides fitting in, we will look at that in more detail in the next module. But anyways this DNA structure has the ability for precise replication. Expression of a phenotype, we will talk about that in one of the later modules but we also know that DNA basically makes RNA and RNA basically which has the language of the nucleotides and there is a specific organelle ribosomes we have talked about that that can read the language of nucleotide and translate or convert into the language of proteins. We will look at this that process of translation in more detail in one of our later modules but this is basically DNA's function that was ascertained by people from its structure. We will continue our discussion of DNA molecule in the next module.